Right, we're on again. Um, well, I think, I don't know, the first time... And it is the Ravi Zacharias I scandal. Shut up. Um, yeah, it was Ravi Zacharias. I think there was actually another Christian guy that, it, it may have been his video that something, you know, there was this name, Ravi Zacharias, with scandal or something. And I didn't bother to look at it at the time because I just wasn't in the mood, I didn't have time or something. And, um, yeah, it's, um, it's all very interesting. But this is, I might play you a bit of the guy that recently I subscribed to his channel. He seems like a nice guy. I don't necessarily go along with everything he says. Um, as I said in my comment, which I'm going to read, because I was very interested that very quickly I got um, a very long-winded response. So I'm going to give you some comments. Uh, I'm here because this morning I woke up and I read the uh, newly released report on that and uh, that is the final report into the investigation against the allegations that were made of him uh, and those allegations uh, came up after he died uh, principally uh, and they were allegations of impropriety of largely a sexual nature and the RZIM Ministries Board decided to commission an inquiry and they've been very transparent, they've released that report as it was tendered to them by the group that was making the investigation. Um, I think that might be enough to give you some uh, context one day ago. See, my comment was an hour ago. Now, I'm, I'm a bit tongue, tongue in cheek, and you know, it's always very debatable as to whether I should behave like I behave and write like I write. But anyway, um, I got a reply uh, very quickly. Listening to your podcast, and I haven't really listened to much, you sound like a very simple fundamentalist. I was wondering if you would self, if you would, um, I was wondering if you would self-label yourself as fundamentalist. Your comments about not knowing the heart, well, not knowing the heart, it should probably be a comma, well with Freud and psychology is that unknowing the heart, surely isn't it? I really don't want to give the impression that I'm a Christian, I am not, but I have had quite a lot of exposure to the so-called phenomena called Christianity. Just because other people do bad things has nothing to do with the idealism of what is taught. I think a lot of people are just desperate to find justifications for what I'm sure you would define as sin, so they can protect blah, 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 whatever it's all. Bloody fucking boring. And there's a... Um, uh, a reply child of God as I was praying God ministered to me in a revelation as I view your profile to see things around you as all blessings but spiritual attacks holding on to them what? I don't want to reply to it I want to read it child of God as I was praying God ministered to me in a revelation as I view your profile to see things around you, I saw blessings but spiritual attacks holding on to them in prayers. I saw a woman in the realm of the spirit monitoring and plotting delay in your life of an evil mirror with a motive to destroy. But as I speak to you, now her time is up for God immediately, for God immediate intervention in your life. Render a seed offering with anything you can afford or give to the motherless, so it to Ergosa Orphanage Home in Adistote, Nigeria before two days with faith as I rise my hands towards heaven and pray for you they shall serve as point of contact wherever you are you'll receive double portion of grace to excel in total restoration of breakthrough in your life and in the life of your family ask for their account details and help Call the MD in charge of the orphanage to get their details on WhatsApp or call them now. Uh, tell him I sent you, for it is not by might nor by power, but of the Spirit, saith the Lord. Zechariah 14, 16, you shall testify to the glory of God in your life. God bless you.
um, on the surface it looks like it's a desperate attempt of someone just to make money and um, constantly trying to get people to um, fork out the money. said my brother let's all live to deny ourselves take up the cross and in love follow him who alone is our hope and joy oh to me that sounds like a whole load of shit fuck it's appalling the devil is capable of confusing even the most brilliant mind And I'm not going to read any part of it now because uh, it is, to say the least, well, totally unedifying. The contents are shocking. They're really shocking. I mean, for those of you who are relying on the interim reports and so on, it's, it's far worse. Um, the situation, the level of misconduct, uh, the level of sin is very, very serious. Uh, and these were sustained patterns of behaviour backed by patterns of deception over many years. Uh, it wasn't, or a number of years. It, it wasn't a one-off. And it's so bad... Uh, Fuck up, you cunt. Um, I have now educated, educated myself um, to discover exactly what he was accused accused of and while it is serious serious enough to go to court as far as I am aware he did not rape um I think I understand why he may have not not wanted to read out what he
doing, which I understand, um, there seems to be a reason. Uh, reasonable fucking Jesus a, a reasonable amount of credibility that he did do what he was accused of doing um, the guy here ob fuscates ob 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 fus Obfuscates exactly the whole truth and nothing but the truth, and unfortunately. gives the impression that Ravi was a terrible monster. He was bad and uh, seems uh, to be lucky <laughs> um, that he wasn't caught while he was still alive
can just have some fucking common sense. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm quite old, and, um, this happens all the time. Um, uh, this happens, this happens, this happens all the time. Get over it. Try reading the Bible. So, it talks so, about evil. So, Fucking Jesus. So, um, this will not not be the first, nor the last Christian to. Trip up. I guess there is such a thing, thing. Just Schadenfreude. By the way, it's impossible to be true. By the way, <laughs> by the way, it is. Impossible to be truly Christian and Australian. <laughs> That's funny. Um, that you do start asking questions and think, well, was this man a wolf in sheep's clothing? Um, was this, what's going on? Now, that's in God's hands to know and to judge now. And the issue, I'm not raising the issue to dwell on that side of it. I'm raising the issue because I actually do have something to say, which I think is important. Uh, and it's what occurred to me this morning when I woke up and read this report. Um, this should be something that causes us to consider ourselves for a moment. Because as much as we're disappointed by what we see and hear, it's important to remember something. We must be alarmed at the nature of the human heart. Jeremiah 17 and 9 says this, a very strong verse if you think about it. The heart, it says, is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And our hearts actually share the same disease as human beings. They're all sinners' hearts. They're all fallen hearts. They're all human hearts. And that should fill us with concern as we come across yet another sober reminder of that simple truth. We're told it often in scripture. We don't like to believe it. And yet it must be true. Oh, you know, it's the source of that old quote, there but for the grace of God go I. <laughs> and that is why we're... Um, I do have to say, I, I, and I don't think I'm alone in this, but it's just so godly and so full of God and so fundamental and uh, I might do Jeremiah seventeen nine. Jeremiah was a bullfrog and Jeremiah and Jeremiah seventeen nine Ah uh, align your will with God. What? It's hard for us to grasp 
that God is a God real person, that he has likes and dislikes. In fact, did you know that God is the most God. sensitive person in the universe? God, God has a heart and there are certain things that please him and certain things that displease him. So if we really want to walk with him in fellowship, if he wants, if we want him to, to, to trust us enough to share his heart with us, we need to learn about his character and what captures his heart. You know, even Jesus said to us in our relationships with people, he said, don't give what's holy to dogs. He said, and, and, and don't cast your pearls before swine. In other words, as Jesus gives us this wisdom, it seems reasonable to me that God is the same way, that God doesn't give what's holy to dogs and that he doesn't cast his pearls before swine, but that he reveals himself to those that are ready to receive his kindness and his love and his revelation. Now, I know that God is like the sun and his goodness shines on the good and the bad alike. I realize that. But I'm talking about when it gets to the deep things of God. God shares his heart with those people, beloved. They're in a position to receive it. This is what Jesus was referring to in the Gospel of John chapter 14. Jesus said, if you love me, you're going to keep my word. And he said, and when you love me and it's demonstrated by the fact that you keep my word, in other words, that your love is real, and because it's real, it's demonstrated in action. He said, when you have that in your life, what's going to happen? He said, is that my father and I are going to come and make our home with you. So do you see here that Jesus says, when someone's heart is properly positioned before us, we come, he and the father, and make our home with that person. God has a heart. God is a real person. He has likes and dislikes. The book of Proverbs tells us the seven things that God hates. And so I'm giving all this introductory information to prepare you for the series that we're in right now, which is called Capturing God's Heart. Since God is a, is a person, and since he has likes and dislikes, if we really want to know him, we want to better understand his heart. We want to know who he is as a person. And the way that we can better understand who God is and understand the nature of his heart is by looking at the relationships with figures in the Bible that walk deeply with God and then seeing what type of relationship God had with these people. For example, the Lord said about David that David was a man that was after his own heart. So when we look at David's relationship with God, we can learn something because God said, this is a man that's after my heart. In today's message, I want to look, beloved, at the prayer that Jesus prayed. Actually, the prayer that he taught us to pray. Because as we look at the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, it helps us to understand God's heart. And it helps us to understand how people that lived with him in fellowship were relating to him. And so we're going to be looking now in the book of Matthew, chapter number 6, verses number 9 through 13. Hear the word of God as I read now one of the most familiar passages in the entire word of God. That David was a man that was after his own heart. So when we look at David's relationship with God, we can learn something because God said, this is a man that's after my heart. In today's message, I want to look, beloved, at the prayer that Jesus prayed. Actually, the prayer that he taught us to pray. Because as we look at the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, it helps us to understand God's heart. And it helps us to understand how people that lived with him in fellowship were relating to him. And so we're going to be looking now in the book of Matthew, chapter number 6, verses number 9 through 13. Hear the word of God. As I read now one of the most familiar passages in the entire word of God. Hear the word of God. Jesus said, pray that in this way. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
And so by looking at the lives of those that walk closely with God. Fuck off, you cunt. Rabbi, you rocked this message. I love it. It hits the very core. You describe it like no other. Rabbi is Jewish. Rabbi is Jewish. The Jews believe the Jews believe that Jesus of Naz Nazareth oh, Nazareth is only only a woe man only a woe man where as some Christians believe Jesus of Nazareth is one with God in the Trinity. This rings count count bells God. And by examining Jesus' words, especially in this context, when Jesus gives us... In Discovering the Jewish Jesus with Rabbi Kant Buck. The Jewish Jesus. What the fuck? Disco Rabbi... I can't read the fuck. Was it? Uh, Rabbi Schneider. Who the fuck is Rabbi Schneider? Jesus fucking Christ. Rabbi Schneider. Looks like he survived the Holocaust. Rabbi fucking come. Schneider. Rabbi Schneider. How to stand firm against the enemy's attacks. This is bizarre. Is this the end? Blah, blah. All of this looks very, very bizarre. Oh my Christ. There's a lot of it out there. Rabbi Schneider. Fucking come. He looks, oh dear. More cult. Rabbi Schnei Schnauzer Schneider. Rabbi Schneider. What the fuck? Jews for Jesus. This article contains content that is written like an advertisement. Jews for Jesus is an international non-profit Messianic Jewish Christian organization that proselytizes to Jews. They believe that Jesus is the Christ and the Son of God, unlike Judaism, which historically has viewed Jesus as a false prophet and has never seen him as a Messianic figure despite modern Jewish scholars' more positive perspectives. 
Jews for Jesus is not considered a Jewish organization by any Jewish authorities. Jews for Jesus. Formation 1970, 51 years ago, as Heine Ministries, 73, 48 years ago, as Jews for Jesus, founder Moshe Rosen. Executive Director David Brickner, formerly called Hanani Ministries History. Jews for Jesus was first founded as Hanani Ministries, led by uh, Moshe Rosen. By 1973, Jews for Jesus became the name of the 501c3 non-profit organisation. Originally, Jews for Jesus was simply one of the organization's several slogans, but after the media began to call the group Jews for Jesus, the organization adopted that name. Rosen and a small group of like-minded people began conducting community outreach on the streets and college campuses of San Francisco. As the organization grew, it was registered as a 501c3. In the following years, branches were established in New York, Chicago, and Boston. In 1978, the Jews for Jesus headquarters was relocated to San Francisco, California, where it remains to this day. In 1981, the organization expanded internationally. Today, Jews for Jesus has offices in over a dozen cities around the world. David Brickner has been the executive director of Jews for Jesus since 1996. Beliefs. The New York City Office of Jews for Jesus. The London Office of Jews for Jesus. Jews for Jesus claims to have found spiritual harmony between Jewish heritage and the Christian faith. A summary of Jews for Jesus beliefs. The Torah, the writings, the prophets and the New Testament are divinely inspired, without error and are the final authority in all matters of faith and life. Traditional Jewish literature is valued, especially where it is supported by scripture. There is one sovereign God, existing in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They believe that this concept is rooted in Judaism. Mankind was created in the image of God, but due to sin has been separated from the Creator. Jesus it sounds like the, what do they call it, the creed, the syphilitic creed. Gone, the Gono Creed, no? Nicene Creed. Jesus is the Messiah and died for the sin of mankind as a substitutionary sacrifice. All who believe in him shall perish in the hell of flames. The church is an elect people in accordance with the new covenant, but are both Jews and Gentiles who acknowledge Jesus as the Messiah. Fucking jam. Well, yeah, it doesn't seem too bad. Operations, references in popular culture, opposition and criticism. Oh no. Opposition and criticism. Oh, I can't get it. Jews for Jesus has a contentious relationship with the Jewish community and their... Jews for Jesus has a contentious relationship with the Jewish community and their methods of generated controversy. Jewish authorities, as well as the governing bodies of the State of Israel, hold the view that Messianic Judaism, the religious movement which Jews for Jesus is affiliated with, is not a sect of Judaism, but a form of evangelical Christianity. Additionally, Gentiles who convert to Messianic Judaism are not recognized as Jewish by any Jewish sect. Belief in Jesus as deity, son of God, or even a non-divine Christ, Messiah, or prophet, as in Islam, is held as incompatible with Judaism by all Jewish religious movements. In a, a 2013 Pew Form study, 60% of American Jews said that belief in Jesus as the Messiah was not compatible with being Jewish, while 34% found it compatible and 4% did not know. In 1993, the Task Force on Missionaries and Cults of the Jewish Community Relations Council of New York, JCRCNY, issued a statement which has been endorsed by the four major Jewish denominations, Orthodox Judaism, Conservative Judaism, Reform Judaism, 
and Reconstructionist Judaism, as well as national and Jewish organizations based on this statement, the Spiritual Deception Prevention Pro Project at the GCRCNY stated, on several occasions, leaders of the four major Jewish movements have signed on to joint statements opposing Hebrew Christian theology and tactics. In part, they said, though Hebrew Christianity claims to be a form of Judaism, it is not. It deceptively uses the sacred symbols of Jewish observance as a cover to convert Jews to Christianity, a belief system antithetical to Judaism. Hebrew Christians are in a radical conflict with the communal interests and the destiny of the Jewish people. They have crossed an unbridgeable chasm by accepting another religion. Despite the separation, they continue to attempt to convert their former co-religionists. The director of a counter-missionary group, Torah Atlanta, Rabbi Ephraim Davidson, stated that the Jews for Jesus use aggressive proselytizing to target disenfranchised or unaffiliated Jews, Russian immigrants and college students, and that their techniques are manipulative, deceptive and anti-Semitic. In an interview for BeliefNet, Orthodox Rabbi Irvine Greenberg, oh is it him? I can't remember, the author of For the Sake of Heaven and Earth said, There are Jews for Jesus who use the trappings of Judaism to bring people into a religion that teaches that Judaism is finished. Jews for Jesus are worse theologically than the mainstream of Catholicism or Protestantism, which now affirm that Judaism is a valid religion. Jews for Jesus say that it is not. They use their Jewish trappings, but de facto, they are teaching the classic Christian suppressionism that Judaism was at best a foreshadowing of Christianity. Well, I certainly wouldn't believe that myself. Christian. Some Western Christians object to evangelizing Jews because they see Jewish religious practice as valid in and of itself. Some liberal Protestant denominations have issued statements criticizing evangelism of Jews, uh, include the um, Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, the United Church of Christ and the Presbyterian Church USA, which said in 1988 that Jews have their own covenant with God. The Board of Governors of the Long Island Council of Churches opposes proselytizing of Jews and voiced these sentiments in a statement that noted with alarm the subterfuge and dishonesty inherent in the mixing of religious symbols and ways which distort their essential meaning, and named Jews for Jesus as one of the three groups about whom such behaviour was alleged. In 2003, the sponsorship of Jews for Jesus by All Souls Church, Langham Place, a conservative evangelical church in London, with the launch event on Rosh Hashanah, launching a UK mission targeting the Jewish community, led to the Interfaith Alliance UK, a coalition of Jewish, Christian and Islamic religious leaders, issuing a letter of protest to the Archbishop of Canterbury. Other, the Interfaith Conference of Metropolitan Washington includes Muslims, Jews and Christian groups. The conference states that they support the right of all religions to share their message in the spirit of goodwill. However, Reverend Clark Lobenstein has condemned the proselytizing efforts of Jews for Jesus and other Messianic Jewish groups. His wording matched the conference's 1987 statement on proselytism, which makes claims against groups that have adopted the label of Hebrew Christianity, Messianic Judaism, or Jews for Jesus, so it is unclear which claims are directed at Jews for Jesus in particular. America's Religions, an Educator's Guide to Beliefs and Practices, contains a note about Jews for Jesus, Messianic Jews, Hebrew Christians, a similar and similar groups. Jews in these groups who have converted to Christianity but continue to observe various Jewish practices are no longer considered part of the Jewish community in the usual sense. There are several other organisations that oppose identification of Jews for Jesus as a Jewish group. Um, yeah, cyber squatting. 
2006 misuse of Jackie Manson name. A member of the group. Mm, okay, Jerry Bent Jew died for you, video. Um, three minute. That Jew died for you video. In 2014, Jews for Jesus published a three minute YouTube video called That Jew Died for You to coincide with Passover, Holy Week, and Holocaust Remembrance Day on the 28th of April. A long haired Jesus dragging a large wooden cross appeared in the film until an Auschwitz extermination camp guard sends him to the gas chambers and says, Just another Jew in German. Jews for Jesus said that the objective of the film was for Jesus to be identified with the victims rather than the perpetrators of the Holocaust, and that the Holocaust has been used, perhaps more than any other event or topic, to prevent Jewish people from considering the good news of Jesus. J. Michelson, writing in the Jewish Daily Forward, described it as the most tasteless YouTube video ever, and wrote not to state the obvious, but it desecrates the memory of six million Jews to use their suffering as a way to convert Jews to Christianity. Fox News Channel and History refused to play an advertisement for the film. Um, unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate. That, that Jew died for you. That Jew died for you. I wonder if I can find it. <laughs> It's three minutes. That Jew died for you.
Then Drew died for you, Mo. Um, are there any comments? This is a very controversial video. Jesus never went to the I think this is a very controversial video. Jesus never went to the Holocaust and never bathed. That surely is horrible emotive propaganda. Quite <laughs> YouTube titled this Jew died for you that's right just for you it's probably the worst piece of Christian propaganda I have ever seen anywhere on the internet it's really disrespectful and horrible and all those things I'm
I don't think you should call it Christian in a broad sweeping statement like you do. From what I can understand is that it was created by Jews for Jesus. They are a strange sect. It is probably an act of syncretism. I'm going to go through and talk about why. So I'm just going to play the clip so you can see what I'm talking about. And if you were ever wondering where God was during the Holocaust, well, this will answer your questions, kind of. So for copyright reasons, I can't use the original music that was playing with this, but pretty much it shows the Jewish people, one falls over, someone helps them up, looks like it must be Jesus. Then it shows all of them arriving at the concentration camp, and of course, someone special walks up. Who could it be? It's Jesus! What are they gonna do? Well, the mean people are gonna kill Jesus. That's shocking. Just another Jew. Brilliant piece of Christian propaganda right here. Yeah, so there it was. An extremely disrespectful video towards Jewish people and an appropriation of what they actually went through during the Holocaust. The Jewish people didn't do anything to deserve what happened to them. I'm not saying that even if the Jesus character were real that he would have deserved a crucifixion, but what he did was an uprising against the government. Anyone would have been killed for that. It's considered treason. It had nothing to do with who he was or who his followers thought he was. And just because his followers thought that he was saving them from sin, it doesn't mean that he actually saved them from anything. A belief doesn't make something a reality. There are Buddhist monks who set themselves on fire confident that they would be reincarnated because they wanted to protest the Vietnam War. And speaking of dying for a cause, and a lot of people are going to hate that I say this, but Jesus, as the Son of God, who technically was God, he got incarnate, knew what was going to happen. He knew that he was going to die and then rise from the dead again three days later. So, I'm sorry, but he didn't actually die. That's really not that big of a sacrifice, knowing that you're going to just be in a coma for a few days and then wake up. It's not really the same thing as being dead. Oh, and not to mention, Holocaust victims are actually real people, and so are Holocaust survivors' descendants. This is no different than Mormons claiming that Anne Frank was a Mormon. Jesus had exactly nothing to do with the Holocaust, except that Hitler was a self-identifying Catholic. Which actually brings me to my last and longest point. Whenever I watched this, the most disgust I felt was because of the first thought I had, which was that the Nazi regime had so many connections to Christianity, using something like this to promote the very religion that helped cause it in the first place is beyond disgusting. Now, I don't want to get into an elementary school level fight about whether or not Hitler was a Christian because I hear this stuff all the time and people say that he was an atheist, just like people criticize me whenever I order a veggie burger and tell me how much I have in common with Hitler because he was apparently a vegetarian. It's just stupid and I don't want to get into that type of debate right now. But I will say that if you're going to sit there and deny that the Nazi regime had connections to Christianity and very strong ones, then you can go over there and stand in line with all the other Holocaust deniers in line for their free ticket to the local insane asylum. From the earliest formation of the Nazi party, Hitler expressed his Christian support to the German citizenry and soldiers. He was baptized as a Roman Catholic in Austria, attended a monastery school, and was an altar boy in the Catholic Church. He was confirmed a soldier of Christ, and his goal was to become a priest. Now, the Nazis began to control schools, insisting that Christianity was taught. They included anti-Semitic Christian writings and textbooks and were not removed from Christian doctrines until 1961. Nazi soldiers even wore religious symbols and placed religious sayings on military gear. The official army belt buckle read, God with us. Now, I want to take a second to read a few lines out of God is Not Great by Hitchens because he talked about this kind of thing a lot. Now, this is from the chapter, The Case Against Secularism. He said, the very first diplomatic accord undertaken by Hitler's government was consummated on July 8th, 1933, a few months after the seizure of power, and took the form of a treaty with the Vatican. The Catholic hierarchy even ordered an annual celebration for Hitler's birthday on April 20th. 420! <laughs> they said, warmest congratulations to the Fuhrer in the name of the bishops and diocese in Germany. Now, even after the war ended, the Nazi criminals were sent to South America by the infamous Rat Line. The Vatican itself provided passports, documents, money, contacts, and organized the escapes so that they could get to the other end. The connection of the church to fascism and Nazism actually outlasted the Third Reich itself. Now, if you don't like this book, I get it. But there is another book. There is a book that you should probably know about. Mein Kampf. There's all kinds of sayings and stuff like this from Hitler. Hence today I believe that I'm acting in accordance with the will of the Almighty Creator by defending myself against the Jew. I am fighting for the work of the Lord. We tolerate no one in our ranks who attacks the ideas of Christianity. In fact, our movement is Christian. So yeah, I find a lot of things to be totally abhorrent with this video. I mean, if video fail, how dare you use the death of millions of people to propagate your beliefs, especially whenever those beliefs 
Christianity is what played a major role in this happening to the Jewish people to begin with. How dare you? I don't know what's wrong with people, but I want you guys to tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'm also going to link to the original video if you want to see it, if you want to go to it, if you want to leave them your thoughts. That would be great because I think right now it has more likes and dislikes, which is blowing my mind. So make sure you go check out that video and let them know what you think. Let me know what you think too. And like this video, share it everywhere. I hope you liked it. Also, if you like my awesome Darwin shirt, make sure to check it out at JacquelineGlenn.com. I'll have a link to that in the description. I've been selling these shirts for a long time. I see a lot of people getting them. It's really cool. If you do get one, tweet me a picture or send it to me on Facebook or something so I can share it because I think it's really awesome to see you guys wearing my shirts. Also, it's helping support me a lot. So whenever you buy them, it makes me Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Why should I fucking? Why should I? Hey guys, so I just watched a really strange video on YouTube titled "This Jew Died." Off, you disgusting slut. I'm not sure I like her. Um, she comes across as a bit funny. How to be a godly wife? Um, it was, uh, I watched the. On the CN documentary, so you don't have to. I like uh, to ban Eugenia Cooney from what? Frank family blogs. Hmm. I oh, fucking Jesus, mother of the cunt. <laughs>